Uh, welcome back to Ina Bear Farm. This video is kind of part two of where we're talking about taking care of our fruit trees and our food forests. So in this part we're going to be talking about building guilds around the trees which are kind of like special relationships between the plants. And so we put in all these different supporting plants around our trees to help them take care of themselves. Because remember in a food forest the goal is for you to be able to mostly walk away after a couple of years of kind of getting the system set up. You really want it to support itself. One of the permaculture principles is to try to get a really big yield without you having to do a lot of work. And that's one of the benefits of a food forest is once you get it set up and it's really taking care of itself, you just show up, you harvest your fruits and nuts and vegetables and things, and you do the occasional pruning, moving something around, the design disturbance, that sort of stuff. But otherwise, it takes care of a lot of its watering needs, nutritional needs, pest protection needs on its own. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to walk you through how we begin to set up these guilds early on in the tree's life. And so we're standing here next to this starfruit tree. And I do not have a total guild around this starfruit tree, but I did plant a comfrey plant right next to it and it's looking really nice and healthy it's a uh, down slope from the tree so it's taken up a lot of the extra nutrients that that uh, we are feeding to the star fruit tree and so what i'm going to demonstrate right now is i'm going to prune the comfrey we're going to add it as a chop and drop like we talked about in part one of our videos so if you haven't seen part one and you'd like to learn a little more about the chop and drop go back and check that out I like to use this tool. I don't know if I've shown this off before, and no, I'm not sponsoring this or anything. I don't have nearly enough subscribers to do anything like that. But just sharing this information with you, I think it's a great tool. I've had it for many years. It's an AM Leonard. It's kind of like a spade knife made in Italy. It's got a serrated side, a knife side, and useful as a digging tool with inch marks on it. Um, I just find it really useful for all kinds of things out here in the garden and in the food forest. So in this case, I'll use the serrated part to cut at the comfrey. So I just reach down towards the bottom, it cuts very easily, and I just start cutting away the extra leaves. <laughs> you just leave a couple of inches above the surface there. So all this stuff that I just cut away, this is our chop and drop, like we talked about in part one. So some of this I'll take and just kind of break it up a little bit. Doesn't need to be anything too fancy. And I'm going to feed this to my starfruit tree. They're kind of in a little guild relationship with each other here. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and set that in. Now I'll come back later and deal with the rest of that chop and drop and I'll cover that comfrey with some straw or some other organic material to let it break down underneath there. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut a chunk of this comfrey out of here so that we can transplant it. Comfrey has a pretty big tap root but you don't have to get a ton of it in order for it to transfer. In fact, this plant is often considered a nuisance. If you plant it in a place where you don't want it, it can be very hard to get rid of it because it will propagate from a, just a tiny little bit of root and it'll start shooting back up. So oftentimes if people want to try to get rid of it in an area, they accidentally end up spreading it because they chop up the roots and then it starts popping up all over the place. So we're going to take this and plant it by our other tree guild in just a moment. But before we do that, we're going to make one more stop and collect one more plant part that we can uh, use to propagate from. So we'll be right back. All right, now we're looking at this plant called yarrow. This is a plant with these really nice little flower clusters that's a beneficial insect plant. So that's another role that we want our supporting plants to play. So. We're going to collect a little bit of this for our tree guild that we're building. So I'm just going to cut a piece out, a lot like I did with the comfrey. It's got a little bit of root on it. Yarrow is a really good plant in that it does spread 
by these types of runner roots, which just makes it another good one for you to propagate and add in other places when you'd like to share it. So we've got our yarrow, and we've got our comfrey. Let's go build a tree guild. All right, so we're gonna set up this guild around this macadamia nut seedling that we have here. If you've seen part one of this video or any of our past videos, you know we're converting a pasture to a food forest. And so we cut all the grass away around of our fruit trees when we plant them. And then we use that grass, it continues to grow further out as a mulch. So this magnet tree has the grass cut away at about a three or four foot diameter around the tree. And then the grass mown around that and added up about a foot thick around the tree um, as a mulch that'll break down and feed the tree. But as the trees get a little bit bigger, we start to clear the grass further away so that here we're probably at about a six foot diameter on this side. And then we start to put in some supporting trees to create a guild. And so remember that we want this area to kind of support itself. So we want to put in different plants that are going to help it to be healthy and thriving as the macnut tree gets a little bit bigger. So the first tree is a monkey pod tree, which is a nitrogen fixing tree that tends to get really big and it doesn't, oh, Lucky's come to visit us. Hi. It does not um, like to be pruned that much. So we'll see how it does. We may end up moving it somewhere else or um, putting in and putting in something like Glaricidia or Leukina that does really well with pruning and then it sends up um, lots of branches that you can keep chopping and dropping. Um, but it's there for now. It'll add some nitrogen to the ground. We'll leave it for a little while and see how it goes. Right next to the monkey pod is a ground cover of perennial peanut that just grows wild here. So it's not like the kind you might get um, at a landscape store if you were to put in your own, but it's super easy to take care of, covers really fast and fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere and pumps it into the ground. So that's the role that plants like that play in a gill. They're pumping nitrogen into the ground, they're creating biomass, they're creating some shade, which is really crucial in the tropical environment. Another plant that we just transplanted is this comfrey here. And so you saw we dug it out and just stick it in the ground and put some straw around it, water it, and it'll start to grow on its own, on its own in a few days. And that's the mineral miner. It's gonna send that deep taproot down and bring those minerals up into the foliage, which will then become chop and drop for the tree that it's helping as its neighbor. It also serves a really good dual function of cutting down on weeds and stopping grass from growing in. So if you'd like, you can create a ring around your trees with it. And it really works as a good barrier to keep the grass from creeping in. It really kind of shades out everything around it. Behind that, we've got the yarrow that we cut out. Same thing, we just added that and we watered it in. We'll add some extra straw in this area um, to help them grow since they are transplants. The yarrow has the little flowers that we looked at before that will bring in beneficial insects. Our fruit trees and nut trees, we're gonna need to bring in pollinators. We're gonna need to bring in bugs that are gonna eat things like aphids and scale and mealy bugs and all those things that will attack our trees so that we don't have to worry about constantly coming and spraying them. We can have a balanced ecosystem where we have predator bugs and prey bugs side by side, keeping each other in order. And the last one we have, this looks like a little stick popping up out of the ground back here. I just kind of want to show you for distance from the macnut tree. And that's a, a Mexican sunflower. It's a cutting, it'll shoot up huge amounts of biomass that we can also chop and drop. And if we like to, we can let it go for flowering as well. <laughs> so spacing is one of those really crucial things with a food forest. It's really hard and it's very site specific. And each guild is kind of specific to the tree that you're growing and what your plan is for that tree. Here in the tropics, you can pack in a lot of fruit trees in a very small space because the sun is so strong. You're really not gonna lose much if you do that. But the more you pack in, the less airflow you have, the more stagnant it gets, the more possibility there is for disease and just constant moisture, which may not be the most beneficial thing depending on 
how much rain you get where you are. So here our fruit trees are staggered about 20 feet apart. And that's largely because we do want to keep the understory open enough to come back and put in understory trees like coffee and cacao in the future when they can benefit from the shade of these larger trees. And we don't want those fruit trees to start growing together. As far as the guild plants, the supporting plants that we put in around them, we also don't want to put them in so crowded that number one, they start to compete with our tree that they're supporting. But number two, that they make it really impossible for you to get in and get to the tree. We don't want to create a barrier for ourselves by planting them. So I recommend kind of starting light at first and just add a few things here and there. You know that we kind of saw how big the comfrey will get. The yarrow will do a little bit of spreading on its own. Ground cover is fine. It can kind of go and cover anything. Um, and, you know, we just kind of want to give a natural sort of design element to this. It sort of looks like how plants would pop up with some diversity in nature. A few clumps of something here, a few clumps of something there. We just don't want to overcrowd too much. So that's our video on creating these guilds. Once you have them up, the idea is that they will start to connect with each other. We'll have two fruit tree guilds that are right next to each other. And the supporting plants will kind of bleed into each other and become one thriving ecosystem. In the description, I will put a few other really good um, guild plants that I like to use. They can be used in a lot of different climates. Um, I have had a farm in Maryland. We're here on the big islands, two very different places. So I can kind of describe some plants that would be good for different um, climates, different zones. And then in the comments section, if you have a chance, throw in some comments about some uh, guild plants that you really like. Um, that have, have been really helpful and easy for you to use. Um, hope that's been helpful. Keep an eye out for future updates on the food forest. Hopefully, once we get these things up and nice and thriving, it'll be something really good to look at for an update video. So we'll see you again here soon at Ina Bear Farm. Aloha.